Okay, in this section, what we're going to do is you'll see previously to us starting the video up again, you'll see that this gun was completely broken in half. We received this at a gun show. And uh, what we've done is we've taken our, our tight bond glue. And what we've done with this is we've glued it together. Again, gluing both pieces of wood that are gonna go together. We've clamped it together and got it solid. After that dried for about 24 hours, what we did was we've used our, 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 uh, our, our chip stick and we've filled in any gaps where there were missing wood anywhere on the stock itself. Now we're going to sand these down. Now the easiest way for us to do this, of course, is with a, uh, with a uh, mechanical sander, a palm sander. So we'll just get this plugged in. Now this steel has been sitting for a few hours, for actually overnight, so it gets really, really hard. It gets hard to sand. So this is the easiest way. We've got a 60 grit sandpaper on here. Okay, so now we've finished sanding it with our palm sander, and now we're just going to finish it off with uh, just our hand sanders. So this is what we're going to have. Now anywhere you see in here where the gray is, of course, that's where the chip stick filled it in. So now we're going to take a 60 grit, we're going to go with the grain, we're just going to smooth it all out. Now this is a stock that is almost irreplaceable, so we don't want to make this stock look like it's been refinished. There's a few things on this gun that uh, uh, we want to leave on there to show its age and its character. Some of them, of course, are these nicks and dents here. And this, of course, was with the uh, from when the military uses the training life rifle. Uh, we want to leave this on there because that's been on there since the day the gun was used originally. So now that we've got that done, we want to go to our 220. Sand it with our 220. All right, now to reinforce this, it's it's been glued up nice and tight. It's 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 good and sturdy, um, but we want to reinforce it even more. So what we're going to do is we're going to determine where we can put two oak dowels into it. So you can see here we've got a little bit of a gap right there. So we're going to dowel that and then we're going to dowel it um, where this break was here. We're going to dowel it right about there. right here okay. now we're going to take our tight bond we're going to fill the hole a little bit that. Then we're going to tap our dowels into it. Now you want to drill the holes a little bit deeper than what the dowel is going to be so that the, the dowel will be kind of inset into it if you can. A little less sanding involved, that's all. Okay, now on, these, on this here where the gray is, we're going to take our red oak our red oak wood putty. And we're just going to wipe that on there. We're going to fill where our dowels are. This is where your box comes in handy. that dry. 
high. But while we're doing that, we want to reinforce the inside also. So we're going to be using uh, our, our epoxy, our two-part epoxy. If we can find it. Now, this being a two-part epoxy, what we're going to do is we're just going to squeeze some onto the paper card, pull back on it. When you pull back on it, that sucks it back out or back up into the tube so that you can just reseal it and it won't dry out on you. Now we're going to just mix that up a little bit. Now we're going to make that so that the clear and the yellow kind of mix together to create one color. Now this is a quick set of epoxy that we use. This is a five minute set. So it allows you to really work relatively fast. So while our wood putty is drying, this will also be drying. Now we're going to bed the inside of this. The reason we're going to do that is because it was cracked once before, we don't want it to crack again in a weaker spot. It is sturdy enough where uh, it won't crack again, but we just want to reassure ourselves that it doesn't. Now we want to just smooth that out, so we want to make sure that the gun fits back into it when we're done. minutes this will be workable and we can finish up our project. Okay so we've got everything dried up here. Now we're just gonna sand this down so that's nice and smooth. Again we're gonna use our 220. Remember what we talked about the last time when we were using our putty. You'll see where it's filled and you don't want to go where it's over. So it may look like, this may look like that's smooth, but it's not. You'll see this go away and that'll cut that down to where the repair actually is. Just like that. Okay, that's all sanded down. Now, we've got a few spots where our putty 
with a little lull. So we want to get those out of there. Otherwise, those are going to be dips in, uh, in our repair. And we don't want any dips in our repair. So we're going to go with our burgundy transparent. And we're going to fill in this little spot right here. Where our where our dowels are on here, those are a little bit sunken, so we're going to fill those. off what we don't need for excess. Color restorer. And you can see that we've we're changing the color as we go along here. We're already darkening that up a little bit. I'm gonna light sand that with a 400. chips off of here. Alright, now we're going to take our top coat and again we're going to do the same thing as we did before. We're going to color this in. So we're going to add a little bit of top coat into there. We're going to take our staining cloth. Now this, you can see by the color, this is a darker mahogany. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a lot more black and very little red on here. It's going to get us our, 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 our base color. We want to blend right up to where we've done our sanding and up until up to the point of the original finish. So then you'll know when you're getting to the right color on it. Just a few seconds to dry. Just a little buff. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna clean the gun up. We're not going to refinish it, we're just gonna clean it up, and then we're gonna put a complete top coat on it, just so the gun looks like it's real nice shape, but it hasn't been refinished. Down with the 400. Very lightly. Again, we don't want to take that left up clockwise off of here. We want to leave that on there. That's pretty semi original to the gun.
we're going to blend our existing finish to our new finish. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually blend it back to the middle and to the edges. Now there's going to be some spots sometimes where as you're running it, you're still going to see a little bit of your repair. So what you want to do is you want to just tap it on. It's going to lay it right on that section and then blend it out from there. Okay. Now, there's one spot on here where there's a little white paint, so we're just going to sand that white paint out of there. It probably came from when they originally did it. Top coat it. 400. Wipe. Steel wool. Blender color in. Now we're going to take our cheesecloth. Fold it up. So we don't have any frays. Just like that. You can use it on your, on your the color existing color that you just put on your paper, and that'll just give it a little better of a tone. Now we're going to just run the whole section here. steel wool. Now when you're going to do a final a final wipe, a final buff down, um, I always recommend that you grab a new piece of steel wool that you haven't been using with the top coat or the uh, or the color restore. No matter what, you're going to get nice fresh wipes on it, you know, like a good stroke on it where you're not going to see your your wiping marks on it with your steel wool. There we go. We've epoxied the inside, we've doubled it, and we've color matched it back again without refinishing the entire gun. Now we'll put it together and uh, we'll give it back to the customer.